good afternoon all now it's time to start with the today's second session we have an eminent speaker professor asna urs with us from university of mysore on behalf of the organizing committee of the student induction program i welcome you ma'am madam please take the seat on the dais so i request uh, dr sheila to escort the ma'am I request Professor Vedavati to greet uh, Madam with the flower bouquet. Thank you, Professors. Now I request Dr. Shubha from Chemistry Department to introduce our speaker to the gathering. ಶ್ರೀ ಸುತ್ತೂರು ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರೆಗೆ ಶಿರವಾಗಿ ನಮಸ್ಕರಿಸುತ್ತಾ ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಿವರಾತ್ರಿ ದೇಶೀಕೇಂದ್ರ ಮಹಾಸ್ವಾಮಿಗಳ ಪಾದಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಶಿರವಿಟ್ಟು ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದ ಬೀಡುತ್ತಾ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ದಾಟ್ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಡೇ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೇ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ಜಿಲಿಯನ್ ಮೈಕೆಲ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೋಟ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ಸ್ಪೀಕರ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಅಸ್ನಾ ಉರೂಜ್ Uh, madam yesterday i received uh, your cv i thought it is cv it was just an achievement it was around 45 pages i thought it is cv later i came to know that it is just her achievements to introduce madam it may take two days so i made it short madam is a professor department of food science and nutrition university of mysore mysore she has 32 years of teaching and research experience her research areas include food science and nutrition agriculture and biological sciences pharmacology biochemistry and molecular biology madam has guided 20 students for their doctoral degree programs currently she is guiding eight scholars madam is an editorial member of many journals namely world journal of gastroenterology and therapeutics global journal of biochemistry indian journal of nutrition and many more madam is an associate edit uh, associate editor of journal of food science and technology this journal is very reputed journal from springer publications give her <laughs> thank you uh, madam is a peer reviewer of many national and international journals she has 4,423 citations with H index of 32 and I-10 index of 82. <laughs> Madam has received many awards. UGC Mid-Career Award, Dr. Rajamal P. Devadas Memorial Award, Academician Award, Professor C.S. Bayan's Lifetime Achievement Award, Dr. Kalpana Chawla Award, <laughs> Young Scientist Award and 50 best papers award 50 best papers award <laughs> madam is a member of many professional bodies with this brief introduction i welcome professor asna madam to our program welcome madam uh, thank you professor for introducing our speaker to all of us now it's time for our speaker to inspire you all with her kind words over to you ma'am Thank you very much. First of all, Yellarugu Namaskara. I hope all of you understand Kannada. I don't think so because many of you might have come from different parts of the country. Well, anyway, welcome to Mysore, welcome to JCE and Mysore University and JCE have been neighbors since many, many years. So I can also extend a welcome to the campus of Manasa Gangotri, which is adjacent. So I belong to uh, Mysore University. I studied in this department food science and nutrition and I completed my PhD also and I am lucky enough to work there as a um, faculty. So I have been associated with the department since 1985. I never got a chance to you know leave the department in various capacities I have been associated. Um, 
that is the picture of our uh, Crawford Hall. I think some of you who are Mysoreans would have passed through near the DC office, Maharaja's uh, sports ground, you would see that is our administrative building. It is called Crawford Hall and Manasa Gangotri. And I'm sure during the stay uh, for four years, isn't it? You will stay here in the campus for four years and possibly if you do your masters, you will continue to stay for some more years. You will definitely enter the Manasa Gangotri campus. I am sure you will come. We have got uh, beautiful, uh, you know, scenes. I mean, the entire ambience is very beautiful. We also have the cricket stadium and uh, we have many more uh, facilities. There is also a round canteen and I am sure that will be one attraction beside whatever uh, eating facilities uh, you have. So, you are welcome uh, to my campus. Okay. Well, uh, you would be wondering why a person from Food and Nutrition Department has been invited to address you all. You are all technology students, isn't it? You have all joined various courses. Can I, one or two of you can tell me what are the courses you have joined for? Okay, information science, electronics, yes, and mechanical. Okay. Well, for all of that, what is common, what were, even though we specialize, we study different courses, what is needed for us to do well, whether you are studying IS or computer science or anything, what is needed, we need to maintain good health, isn't it? And good health, like a sound mind and a sound body, both should go hand in hand, only then you will be able to concentrate on whatever you are uh, doing, whether it is architecture or agriculture or anything, you need a sound mind in a sound body. How does that happen? That is definitely through consuming healthy food, isn't it? Our body needs different nutrients at different times. The needs of the nutrients vary from fetal life, that is from the time we are in the womb of our mother and up till the time we go to the grave or whatever, till, till our end, we need nutrients in different proportions, in different quantity and also depending on our gender, whether we are male or female and then the age group we belong, whether you are an infant or a school child or adolescent. So, according uh, to the age, our needs of nutrients will vary. In, the, uh, in your period, like I think you have just completed your teens, most of you have completed your 19, your 19 and above. 18, okay, that's good. So, teens, you're still lucky to be in the teen uh, years. Well, your growth is not yet complete because, you know, teenage, completion of teenage marks the advent of adulthood. So, you are all in a stage where you, you might be confused, am I yet an adult or am I an adolescent or am I a teenager? See, this is a very crucial stage where youngsters have difficulty in finding identity can I be included in the adult, among the adults or this one? So, this is a very, you know, uh, crucial s uh, stage. But uh, uh, again, from the nutritional perspective, this is also a, a very important stage where the building of the body takes place, especially the bone density. Because you boys um, by nature are lucky to have a thicker bone density. Like that means your bones are thicker and stronger compared to uh, girls and uh, later on it is in our hand to take care of that, that we don't need lose this mus uh, bone density, okay, which is needed for walking, for making, for everything including playing and all that, all right. So, with that background, I, I mean I will just give you an intro, why is an induction needed? You have been going through this induction from past two, three days I suppose, started from 16th, 14th, okay, that is a very long. Now, uh, as I am told, like you are having this, so every course, in every course we have an induction program or we call it as orientation program also because we need to orient the students who are joining the campus which is new, courses are new, teachers are new, obviously they have to get acclimatized, they have to get familiarized with all that. So, if we w give them a warm welcome. It is not just showering some flower petals or giving you nice snacks and all. It is not that. Welcoming by giving you what you are in for. What is it you are going to do in the next few years you spend in that respective course. 
So, from my understanding, engineering skills, of course, should be uh, you know uh, inducted and oriented towards whatever subject you have taken, whether it is information science or computer science. Apart from that, you need to be oriented for all round development because you know it is not just uh, you know one should not be a bookworm only in, in today's world to survive to do well in this competitive world you need to be aware of many things is not it you should learn many skills. So, therefore, all round development then to sensitize to explore the academic interests and to improve the professional behavior to promote bonding you know though you belong to different streams you know we have computer science students mingling with environment science or with mechanical. So, that kind of bonding uh, is also essential and we need to build relations with teachers and our peers and also all of this I believe will help us to be a better person. We cannot be a bookworm only. Now, looking at this like you know what all is needed why uh, uh, for the time you spend here 4 years you must focus on your physical activity as I said a healthy mind and the healthy body is necessary for which some amount of physical activity is necessary. Then some of us are naturally endowed I believe that every person has got some talent ok it is only that somebody should help you to identify or you will get an opportunity to identify what talent you have apart from your uh, technical interest you know. Some may be very good in music, you may be endowed with a good voice, you may play guitar, you may play veena, you may play sitar or you may play better I mean football or any other. So, therefore, that uh, apart from the sports activity you need to identify your creative art and I am sure JC is one institute because my brother studied here, my cousin, my uncle many of them have studied from my family in JC. So, I am aware of the culture, the study culture, the creativity, the opportunities, then also you have cultural activities and JC Anna, I might you will look forward to that is one big thing which happens. It, it used to be the talk of the town in our times, in our college days. So, I am sure uh, you will also enjoy. So, then human values, see along with acquiring uh, theoretical knowledge and other knowledge, it is also important for us to imbibe some human values, ok, because this is what will go along with us until we live in this uh, world. So, acquiring that human values is very important, learning to respect others, ok, not to disrespect and I am sure all of us have been brought up at home, is not it? Our parents, our grandparents keep advising us, giving us these kind of uh, thoughts and values which they have imbibed from their uh, seniors. Sometimes we may find it, yenappa ishtondu boring bari lecture hodi tidare mane nallu ashte yena adu shuru aitamma nin lecture anta nau hele helti valva advise madidre aita so well tomorrow you will get married you will become a parent you will realize how important it is to have imbibed this human values so that we can you know practice in our life be better persons that is why we need human values to explore oneself to experience the joy of learning to stand up to peer pressure etcetera and also to be aware of relations with family, friends, teachers and also to be sensitive to others, not to hurt others, not to harm. I believe in this uh, statement that you know if you cannot do any good to anyone, do not do any harm. Do you understand the depth of that statement? Like I cannot do any anything good, but at the same time let me also prevent myself from not causing harm to others. So, this if we understand this is the funda of life, if we understand this and practice and I am sure life will be much much better for ourselves and we can make it better for others also. Then literacy, literary, you know this is reading, writing, possibly debating and acting a play, Ma many of us will be endowed with literary skills also. So, try and explore, do not feel shy that you know if you want to ex uh, somebody teases you rather says like oh you are a drama person, you are a literary person. So, what not everybody will have that uh, skills ok, each one is born with some skills, some kind of a talent. Then proficiency, now it is very important since because all of us will not have been brought up in similar background or we do not come from same similar areas is not it where opportunities may be limited. So, this is one opportunity for you all where you can hone your skills, you can overcome some critical lacunas. For example, 
not all of us may be very proficient in English, isn't it? We are not born uh, to speak, uh, we are not uh, endowed like that. But you can acquire that, that is nothing is unachievable. If you really determine, you can do everything, okay? So you can acquire that computer familiarity. Not everybody would have had at home, right? So we also learnt, because in our job it was introduced, we never learnt computer in our college days. So, but you are all lucky, isn't it? So you have all these, this is one opportunity where we can acquire all these additional skills. So, induction program aims to induce professional and social ethics among engineering brains. I would call all your brains are engineering, everybody's brains are engineer in some way or the other, but these are engineering brains and since you all come from diverse area, this kind of an induction program is necessary to make you aware of the campus facilities. Apart from that, what all can you acquire additionally? You want to improve your academic uh, skills, you want to uh, study more along with that. There are a lot of such courses IC, uh, offered in ICT mode or UGC is offering on Swayam MOOC courses are there. So there are all opportunities, uh, you can uh, explore that slowly. So with that background, let me now bring you to the world of nutrition. Nutrition is not new, isn't it? All of us have been eating. When you were a fetus, when you were in your mother's womb, even then you have been eating, though not voluntarily, involuntarily, what your mother ate, it went through the umbilical cord and reached you and has nourished you. So, nutrition is part and parcel of everybody right from inception up to death right so we uh, let's try and understand what is it in the next few minutes maybe about 40 minutes i will be talking on these various uh, aspects see why do we need to eat food to satisfy hunger then to fill our tummy it's lunch break so i have to eat I have been forced to, I have been given this, so I have to eat. Or I love to eat, I, that's why I am eating. Isn't it? Beyond that, why do we need to eat? What you eat matters. You can eat everything, anything. I want, I mean, you can participate, you can talk. There is no marks for this, no internal assessment for this, right? No, you will not be penalized for talking. <laughs> what you eat matters and when you eat. What you eat, can you eat everything? Everything is not edible, isn't it? Okay, so from, uh, um, because m since man became civilized, we have started growing agriculture, we have practiced, so we have started rearing animals. We, though, though we eat animals, that too there is a restriction, isn't it? You do, don't eat every animal. Every animal which walks on the earth, we don't consume it, right? So, we have over the years, our ancestors have helped us evolve what is edible and what is not edible and also what is poisonous and what is non-poisonous and what is assimilable because grass, an elephant can eat grass and grow so huge. Can we eat grass and grow so huge? It's not possible because our digestive system is different and their digestive system is different. So, what you eat matters and when you eat, can you be eating 24 by 7? No, it's not possible, isn't it? So, over the years, we have now come to a system, three meals a day. Some might eat four times, five times. That is your personal uh, choice or you might be munching every half hour, which has become quite common uh, nowadays. All right. So, what you eat, when you eat matters a lot. Why? To enjoy good health, to be able to focus, to improve your memory and above all, all of that to stay healthy. This is the reason why we need to eat. Now, let's spend a minute to understand what is food. Everything is not edible. What is edible is only we consider it as food and what are the functions. So, very briefly I can tell you that food is an edible substance. It could be solid or liquid, isn't it? Our food will be liquid. If you have some porridge, beverage, that is a liquid. When, you, when it is consumed, it meets the requirements of energy, bodybuilding, repair, regulation and protection due to the nutrients which are present in it. Like building up the body as we grow. For growth and development, we need many nutrients. 
repair what do we mean repair it is not a machine that it has conked off and then you have to go to a mechanic to get it repaired every day there are lots of our cells which there is a wear and tear happening without our knowledge we don't know at all what is happening so that is what we mean by repair of new cells old cells uh, you know die and new cells are created and this is the repair work happening and that is why we need to sleep you give time to your body to or to address to this uh, wear and tear uh, aspect okay then regulation every day without our knowledge our organs all our organs are functioning do they take your permission will the liver call and ask you can i function today or does a heart say can i function can i take rest for some time if that happens we will be resting forever rest in peace we will be right so involuntarily many of our activities are happening without our knowledge and for which food has to be has to provide the required energy this is what we call basal metabolic rate okay of the quantity what you eat the food a portion of the energy is entrusted for it is allocated for maintaining the metabolic rate of all the vital organs okay that is the reason why we need to eat and if you define the functions of food are it satisfies physiological needs that is for the functioning of various nutrients providing energy for us to see hear talk walk run do every activity apart from that psychology also it gives you a sense of satisfaction right and then also how you think your mood is also influenced by the nutrients what you eat you've heard of some people being very aggressive some being very soft timid okay by nature this might be but to some extent our mood is influenced by our hormones so for the making of those hormones food is the basic provider it provides all the precursors for the making of all these neurotransmitters and the various hormones so then psychological uh, it gives you a sense of satisfaction it gets you gives you a sense of uh, you know calmness you know some at times i uh, i don't know whether you have yet experienced when you are really um, tense and what do you crave for when you don't know what to do you feel like eating a chocolate it satisfies our uh, this one. and then it soothes our mood also why because carbohydrates are known to soothe the mind right so like that each type of a nutrient has got an effect on our brain and indirectly it will affect our mood also then social we eat even for social purpose isn't it when you are invited you visit somebody's house i mean atithi devo bhava in our country right see no, no the practice of visiting relatives homes or friends homes has slowly coming down we don't have that much time that's what is the excuse given by everyone but when some visitor comes to our home it is we consider it is our moral duty to offer food that is how i think if you trace back the indian tradition it is very very uh, you know uh, in, it is much inculcated in our uh, culture so for social reasons and when we go to a wedding or a party or uh, namkaran or any kind of some function food is something which is offered and even the host will take utmost uh, you know uh, effort in making the guests comfortable and seeing that everybody has eaten or not then i would like to add one more thing now in today's world world we eat to please someone to get into the good books of someone or to be in in to be included in that fashionable i mean it is a fashion statement if you are not going to kfc oh no you are not you you cannot join that peer group to please your peer group if you don't go there if you don't eat the pizzas or you you're not at that favorite haunts then you know there are these are the new uh, things which we are seeing in the younger generation so please don't try to eat i mean don't feed yourself in order to please others feed only if your body needs it so what is the importance of nutrition food you eat affects your health and quality of life it is nutrition is the process by which your body takes in the food process it 
and gives you all the energy and nutrients are the substances which we find in foods like for example carbohydrates are there proteins are there fats minerals and vitamins these are all some of the examples of nutrients and then we also come across uh, a unit called calorie I'm sure you have all studied physics and chemistry. In physics, we have come across many units. One calorie, it's, it's nothing but the measurement of energy. Right. Here we use kilocalories and even it is expressed in kilojoules also. So it is like every gram of protein, but when it is digested, how much energy does it give? So every gram of protein and carbohydrate will give about 4 kilocalories. Whereas one gram of fat or oil will give you 9 kilocalories. 2.25 times more than more more energy compared to proteins and carbohydrates and that is the reason why uh, doctors and nutritionists uh, everyone advise people to eat less of lipids or fats because of the two it, it gives you more energy but of course we need some amount of lipids also in our body so with that background the correct definition of nutrition is nutrition is a science of food the nutrients and other substances which is present how they interact in the ba in the body and how they interact to maintain the balance in relation to health and disease and it is also a process by which organisms it need not be only human beings even the animals the insects the locusts the vertebrae invertebrate all families of life ingest digest absorb transport utilize and ultimately excrete the unwanted uh, substance and now with that we'll try to understand what is health do i look healthy Yes, I look healthy. Okay. Now, if if you say I'm looking, I'm I look healthy or I am healthy, I must be healthy from four dimensions. What are those four dimensions? One is physically. Maybe physically because I'm standing, I walked. I mean, I I didn't need any help to walk. I was able to walk. So maybe uh, I'm flex. I mean, my body is still flexible. I'm able to uh, you know manage my physical needs. I might be categorized as being physically healthy, but I must be mentally healthy also. I can't stand here and talk rubbish, right? I can't stand here and vent out my pent up emotions, my uh, various other kind of moods. I can't be doing that. So I must be mentally sound. I must be socially healthy also. How do I interact? Do I scold you? Do I address you in ekavachana or do I hurl any abusive language? Or how do I interact with my peers, with my family, with my friends, with my colleagues? So that is being socially healthy. There are certain norms of behavior, isn't it? So it's not pretense. Please don't mistake. It is not pretense. It is we are expected to be socially healthy also. Then WHO, you've heard of WHO? World Health Organization has recently added the fourth dimension for uh, the definition of health that spiritual, you know, spiritually also we must be healthy. So, if I say I don't have any disease, doesn't mean I'm healthy. I must be physically, mentally, socially and spiritually healthy. So, being healthy is not just mere absence of a disease, but it is a state of complete health in terms of all these four aspects. So if I don't know how to control my emotions, if I don't know how to behave, then I'm definitely not socially and emotionally, mentally, I'm not healthy. All right. So what are nutrients? What are substances? Now, I'll just cut short. There are at least 46 different essential nutrients. Have we ever thought that you know these many nutrients are present in the foods which we eat? Though all the 46 nutrients you may not be consuming in every meal, but by and large you may be consuming. There is a lot of variety in our intake. So occasionally we will be getting, definitely there will be at every meal, 5 to 6 nutrients will be present in our consumption. Now, Major nutrients are carbohydrates, protein and fat. We call them as macronutrients because we consume them in greater quantity, right? And as I told you, the energy yielding capacity is 4 kilogal per gram and 4 kilocal per gram for both carbohydrate and protein and fat gives us 9 kilocals. So the next time you reach out to fried foods, to mayonnaise that has a lot of fat in it, to burgers 
with lot of with dollops of cheese and everything so think twice of course you can digest you can utilize it because you are you are still very very young but to maintain your health be physically fit and all you we need to restrict our consumption of fat then minor nutrients we call them as micronutrients these are vitamins and minerals we have 23 different vitamins we have uh, almost 15 to 16 different types of minerals which are needed for uh, various functions and i would also include water water though it does not give you any energy but it is an elixir of life can we think of life without water it's impossible isn't it you can be without food for the whole day you can manage even without water for the whole day but if you continue in this state you will be dehydrated right so water is the elixir of life not just for drinking purpose because in our body Uh, all the biochemical reactions the digestion metabolism everything takes place in an aquatic media okay aqueous media for all the biochemical reactions for all the enzymes to act water is the media so therefore we need to consume water in some adequate quantity so what i have been talking of this is just a glimpse of that uh, very simply i have tried to put it here carbohydrates what do they do uh, the function is they give us energy they have a protein sparing action from which source do we get we eat cereals dawasa dhanya galu akhi rice wheat and ragi that is they are called as millets but all of them are included in this group pulses that is bele kaalu galu and uh, all the vegetables especially the roots and tubers and some fruits like banana and all are rich in carbohydrate proteins are needed see the proteins have lot of functions to perform and we can derive them from pulses meat fish milk products egg and cheese egg but cereals are not so rich in proteins uh, like rice and ragi and are not rice and ragi for every 100 grams gives you just 6 grams of protein whereas wheat has got double 12 grams the rest of them all come under the category of 6 to 8 grams per 100 grams consumed then lipids with they we can derive them from fats and oils that is the oil which is used in cooking the ghee what we use and when you consume meat fish the ground nut or the cashew nut almonds and walnuts they all have some fat in it and all the dairy products like cheese milk paneer butter etc minerals there are many minerals they are all having lot of function one of them i can uh, tell you calcium is needed for good bone i mean for the making of bones right Uh, and also the teeth so for the skeletal growth for overall growth blood clotting giving us immunity and uh, vitamins for vision vitamin a is very essential for good vision immunity bone for the uh, bone growth for the construction of teeth and strong teeth and also it has aids in metabolism we derive them from dairy products green leafy vegetables many of us don't like green leafy vegetables isn't it when the when your mother says eat the greens we always pick them and put it in the side how many of you do that you do that from tomorrow please don't do it okay <laughs> okay so then all these let's start spend more time now what are the benefits of staying hydrated i said that we need to drink water how much water per day do you know at least 1.5 liters of water at least i'm telling 1.5 so that is 6 to 8 tall glasses of water so please see to it that you keep yourself adequately hydrated but when i say it is water it does it should not be mixed up with beverages the colas the bottled drinks it is not that it is plain drinking water we are talking of so there are lot of importance of water in our lives see there's so much of uh, so much of benefits for maintaining fluid balance for it serves as a muscle fuel though not directly in the uh, in the functioning of the proteins it is necessary then it gives you a good skin and it improves the it boosts our productivity and uh, it helps in removing the toxins then it also acts as a joint creaser like you know for lubrication and for flexibility then it also boosts our brain functioning controlling our calorie like you know you can eat less if you are well hydrated if you drink a glass of water 
uh, at least 15 to 20 minutes before uh, consuming the food we will be restricting now this i don't recommend it to you all you are still young you can eat well but eat well doesn't mean anything what you lay your hands on okay so there is also a terminology which we nutritionists use called as balanced diet this doesn't mean you have to have a balance and weigh everything it's not that the diet has to be balanced in terms of various nutrients just now i talked of major nutrients and minor nutrients no? so all of them should be present in certain balance so that is what why balanced diet is needed for better behavior and learning environment good nutrition helps students to be prepared for this learning improvement in nutrition makes students healthier and students are likely uh, likely to absent your absentism also comes down if you eat well and lead a healthy life studies have shown that malnutrition leads to behavior problems and sugar has a negative impact on our behavior so be careful on two things none much of lipids or fats in your diet and not much of sugary drinks okay it affects your brain function Balanced diet includes consumption of protein, fat, complex carbohydrates and fiber which we get from by consuming vegetables and fruits. So there is also one more figure I want to share here. Can you see it is a pyramid shape. Okay, This is called as a food pyramid. Now the bottom is quite wide right the base. So what is the grains all the uh, rice, wheat and ragi and uh, pulses and all they, mu they must be consumed in greater proportion followed by vegetables and fruits which nowadays is coming down uh, many of us quote the fluctu fluctuating prices as the reason for not being able to purchase enough fruits but luckily we have seasonal fruits like guava and papaya and banana is eternally available all the 12 months so whenever you feel hungry don't reach out for a chocolate or a bar of uh, anything bar uh, it is better you can eat two bananas because it has some starch it has potassium it has many minerals and it gives you little bit of energy compared to eating any other uh, fruit because uh, orange or a mosambi will not quench your uh, hunger but two bananas definitely will give you some kind of uh, I mean will provide you a little energy to sustain for uh, the hunger for another hour or so so we should next to grains and pulses we must consume vegetables and fruits uh, in this uh, in this order then milk and alternatives meat fish egg and all all this come they are in lesser proportion you can see as the pyramid scales up at the tip of it is fats and oils salt and sugar because these are the ones which are not very good they're not very good for our health we should not be consuming them in excessive quantity see we don't have this group in at the bottom of the pyramid okay so that is why i am sharing this then you're all still in your teens let's focus a little on that why why should we focus on this particular age group and why what advice can we give why should we advise them there is some backdrop like you know i'm sharing the scientific reasoning for that teenagers uh, teens is a time when eating habits are changing haven't you experienced your eating habits have changed from the time you were in high school to your pre university days to some extent it has and also thanks to or should i say due to pandemic also our eating habits have changed being at home being accessible to swiggy zomato and various other things and all of them offering buy one get one you pay for one 50 percent extra mega meal mega burger all that it has been so tempting for all of us right our eating habits have changed definitely and this is a time like when you were a school child your mother used to give you and you would obey and eat but as you have grown up you have made your own choices also and that have been influenced and right so teenage is a time when eating habits are changing the patterns developed during adolescence tend to reach adulthood okay and teenage is a critical time for developing health behavior patterns see um, the company with whom you spend like you you can acquire some unhealthy habits of taking to alcohol or smoking and all this is a very vulnerable the stage where to impress to please to get into the peer group we try we may not be liking it but sometimes to feel 
that you also belong to that group you may do it but please i implore upon you don't you ever do it don't you ever right and adjustment of self perception owing to awareness of physical changes which is occurring at this chain and more time is spent progressively away from parents which results in making more important decisions we because we are away from our home for a long time we are not uh, in contact with our parents all the time so this gives the teenagers more time to make independent decisions so there are all these hap things happening in the teenage adjusting to structural and functional changes because lot of physiological changes are happening we learn to think differently and also uh, teenagers establish new ways of relating to individuals in their environment you move out you might have come out from your you have moved from your hometown to mysore you're making new friends you want you are adjusting so, so many uh, happening so many so much is happening in this time then what happens if we indulge in unhealthy eating okay now you can see there is a big mouth here and you can see lots of things burgers and all that so if you keep stuffing all of that this is what we mean unhealthy right you here what do you see cola finger chips burger and uh, candies and various other things so this is a very uh, what should i say a very dangerous combination a very this is having lots of sugar in it and there are some some other uh, things which are added and some of these which have this effervescence no like which have the fizz the carbonated drinks carbonated ones they have carbon dioxide some of them also have phosphoric acid they are more acidic the more and more we have them on empty stomach what happens is the internal lining of our intestine of our stomach also will get eroded and in the long run you tend to develop acidity gastritis i have heard i have come across youngsters our own students like to study pg it is at 21 22 they come many of them suffer from gastritis why because they are making wrong choices so uh, please you know cut down occasionally you can have but let let that not be the drink which you will have instead a fruit juice is much better fresh freshly made uh, juice is much better than even canned right and what is this burger made from refined flour maida there isn't much fiber in it there is no much there's no protein at all what is the stuffing it will be either cheese or chicken or something so again that also will have dollops of fat in it occasionally is fine eating these foods but this should not be your main meals all the time so what are the consequences is not displaying the content i'm sorry i have to oh, miss that what happens if we consume that now we move on to junk food you have heard of this term junk is something which we gujri <laughs> right but is it that no see this no food is junk but because some of the foods like for example sugar and oil they give you only one nutrient sugar gives us only carbohydrates fat gives us only uh, oil or fat only energy is, uh, is coming only from this there's no protein there's no vitamin there's no mineral uh, nothing in it so that is the reason now the who coined this term did it originate on its own if you look into the dictionary it was not there 50 years ago it just originated in 1972 coined by uh, uh, mr michael jacobson who was a director at center for science in public interest in us he is the one who coined this term junk food it is an informal term we use to denote foods which have little or no nutritional value every food will have at least two different nutrients whereas these kind of foods will be Uh, rich in only fats and sugars that is the reason why we call them as junk food they are high in fat and not to forget sodium see sodium chloride is a is the chemical name for salt what we consume no the common salt is sodium chloride 1 gram of sodium uh, salt will have 40% sodium and 60% chloride and this sodium is the culprit if we consume in excess amount it can result in us becoming hypertensive much early in life right you have heard of 
uh, I don't want to scare you, but I want to caution you that there are youngsters, young adults at 25, 30, they all have high blood pressure. They have high lipid levels. Okay, So these are all because of inculcating in unhealthy food and also an unhealthy lifestyle. Okay, So what are the attractive? Now all of this is very attractive. I will keep an idli here next to this. How many of you would reach to that idli rather than these? Even to me, this looks very attractive, isn't it? Definitely, French fries are tastier, potato chips are tastier. Now, I want to share a small secret. These fries, I mean the chips, no? There is a different technology used in making us. Once you put your hand into the pack pocket, I am sorry, packet, chips packet, you don't want to stop it, isn't it? Nobody, even me, if you give me one also, I am not saying that only youngsters have this habit. It is general, it is human. The reason is, there is a way of adding salt to that potato chips. It is, because our tongue has got different taste buds. They are all placed differently. Five types of taste buds are there. Now, the taste buds for salt they get tingled and excited when directly salt comes in contact. That, like putting salt on your tongue, it you feel the taste much faster than if you put the salt in a food and fry it or cook it and then eat it. Like it will take some time for me to sense whether the rice is salty, dal is salty or less salty compared to putting directly salt. So, in this fries, no? The salt is sprinkled after it is fried, so that the first thing you put on your mi uh, on your in your mouth, you come in contact with the salt, and that creates an urge for us to eat more and more. So the food industry, from the commercial perspective, to gain to sell more, they have to thrive, they have to survive, isn't it? So these are various techniques which are used, and that is why. You may stop eating two vadas. You know, vada, pakoda, those are also tasty, but two or three you may eat. But you, if I give you a plate full of ten pakodas, you will not eat all the ten. You will stop at two or three. But the same thing, I give you a packet of potato chips, the uh, Lay's or whichever uh, brand it is, you, we will not stop. The reason is the manner in which the salt comes in contact with our tongue is the reason for it. All right. So, fast foods definitely taste good, right? Gobi Manchurian? Yes, but it has a lot of things added to it and make it easy to cook and eat. These include salt and fat. Can we imagine a burger without cheese, without mayonnaise? No, it will not be a burger at all. And potato chips, instead of frying them in oil, I will sort it on, uh, then I will give you. It will definitely not be potato chips or wafers. So, we now have serious concerns about the effect that too much salt and too much fat in our diet can have a bad effect on our health. I need not speak more. Eating junk food can cause us to gain more weight. Please remember, 1 gram of fat, 9 kilocalories. 1 gram of protein, 4 kilocalories. All right. And in the long run, excess weight, obesity can make us acquire type 2 diabetes much early in life. And then heart diseases. Right. So, now we will move to some scientific aspects. I do not want to scare you all, but here I want to caution you all and advise you all. Please, please don't miss your breakfast. You are going to come to college from tomorrow or whenever uh, you are asked to. Never, never compromise and miss your breakfast. Now, the term breakfast, you break it into two. Break fast. What are you breaking? Your overnight fast. It is not a div that other kind of fast. You have eaten your last meal at 9 or 10 previous night. And the entire night you have not eaten and then you are breaking that fast. So, the overnight fast will be maximum 10 to 12. But today, our eating timings have changed. We are eating at 11, 
in the night we are eating at 12 in the night at 1 also in the night because you are sleeping late so this is something which you need to not indulge in so never miss your breakfast have an early breakfast eat properly two biscuits one slice of bread or one glass of milk two biscuits and one tea is not breakfast you must have a proper breakfast okay you must have some protein you must have some carbohydrate now why we need is so that our brain and every organ starts working it's like if you put some fuel into your vehicle only then it will start no so the same way food is the fuel for your body to start working for the entire day and breakfast is not something which you have at 12 at 12 noon or you call it as brunch you mix both and have it at 12 or 1 o'clock that should not be there and traditional Indian items are definitely good so our bodies have to be refueled after 8 to 12 hours of sleep so therefore we need to have breakfast and please have a proper breakfast otherwise you will not be able to concentrate in what your teachers are teaching you you will not be able to assimilate what and understand so you will tend to droop off in the class we can see many of them will automatically go on snoozing ok now the other thing is what we find in youngsters is anemia have you ever heard of this term anemia have any of you heard of this term no no nobody ok can can you tell me what do you understand having low hemoglobin levels our blood is red in color is it green black yellow no no it is red in color the redness comes from the pigment hemoglobin re in red blood cells now some people's blood will be blood red very bloody red it will be deep blood <laughs> ok <laughs> some will be lighter so the amount of hemoglobin in our blood is what gives that red color deep red or lighter red now this is again related with whether health from the health perspective I can say being anemic is not good that means see what do the red blood cells do they carry oxygen what we inhale to every cell to every tissue oxygen is needed now if there is less hemoglobin in our red blood cells less oxygen is supplied to every cell and tissue so therefore your cells will not work well and you will tend to be more fatigued tired and your productivity will be lesser so how can you ensure please check your hemoglobin levels for boys if it should be more than 14 grams per deciliter for girls it should be around 12 you know 11 to 12 if you have is good okay now lesser than 10 is where you feel tired you get uh, tired faster you can't continue uh, working or concentrating uh, on any job for a longer duration of time so what are the symptoms of anemia fatigue headache yellowish skin the pa pale skin you know the lower the hemoglobin levels are the paler our skin will be some to some extent it can even cause irregular heartbeat in the extreme like if you are highly anemic then it can even give us chest pain because our uh, tissues are not getting enough oxygen okay uh, and there you can feel cold extremities in extreme conditions dizziness leg cramps and insomnia that is sleeplessness so these are all now here you can see this is normal blood with lot of red cells in that many red cells and inside the red cells are the hemoglobin and here is the anemic blood where number of red blood cells are lesser so obviously the amount of hemoglobin is lesser in them so what foods to select iron you can't be eating kabnatina kagala okay iron filings we can't be eating it has to come from the food only right so iron rich foods the green leafy vegetables palak sap okay dates you can eat two dates egg yolk then uh, raisins uh, broccoli or cauliflower beans soya beans pumpkin seeds finger millet or uh, that is uh, our ragi all of them are rich in iron right so these are the ones and abundantly we can eat legumes and all of them give us lot of iron in our body then for better hemoglobin we need to consume even vitamin C that is coming from fruits right because it facilitates in absorption and another two advice I want to tell you 
please avoid having tea or coffee soon after your lunch. Of course, tea and coffee are kind of stimulants. They, you know, they help you come out of your fatigueness and alertness. That is because they have the stimulating factors, caffeine and tannins in them, which wake and, uh, keep us awake. And I'm sure when you sit to study in the night for your exams, you ask your mom, give me some tea. It can drive away the sleep, so they are stimulants. But apart from that, what happens is, it will prevent the absorption of iron. If you have tea and coffee immediately after your main meal, like for example, I have eaten spinach, I have eaten beans, I have eaten soya bean or something in my lunch. Soon after that, immediately I take tea or coffee. So we should avoid that, right? Then another thing is try and eat a fruit instead after your meal. Fruit will have vitamin C and it helps in absorption of uh, iron, okay? Then the brain foods, because you need to have an active brain and a healthy brain so that it can help you in your studies. So there are so many foods like, you know, all of them uh, are good like cauliflower, broccoli, uh, sprouts and blueberries, walnuts. Have you ever seen the structure of walnut? It resembles our brain structure. So that is why it is good for the brain. So having a one or two walnut or a, uh, one date, okay, or uh, even uh, the almonds, two or three per day is not going to uh, cause any problem at all. Even ginger, apples, watermelon, cabbage, lettuce, um, uh, the musk melon, and uh, all the nuts give us. So these are all the uh, brain foods. And uh, six worst foods for your brain. Too much sugar, too much of saturated fats, fried foods, processed foods, simple sugars, trans fat, which is very commonly, that is vanaspati, which is very much used in all the bakery foods. Okay? So these are the worst foods for the brain. And another thing is sleep is very important. Apart from essential nutrients, we need to have good sleep, enjoy good sleep. And I'm sure in your age, it should not be a problem. But don't, uh, you know, evade sleep. Keep awake till 1 and 2 and then sleep. Obviously, you will not be able to get up and be on time for your class. You will not be energetic. You will not be active if you sleep late. Now, why is this? Because we must follow a proper time. There must be regularity. How much duration? It is not 2 to 3 hours. You must have at this age, you must enjoy 7 to 8 hours of uninterrupted sleep. Not get up in between. Did I get a message? What was this beep in between? Who sent me a message? Please switch off your Wi-Fi connectivity in the night, all you, okay? So, even I would say even if you switch off the phone, because we have this tendency, something, it, uh, one beep you hear on the phone, oh, what was that message? Who sent me at this hour? You will be curious to say, see that. So, please avoid that. Lack of sleep can cause parts of your brain to f slow or shut down completely, okay? Now here, why sleep is important? We don't want our students to be like this. Imagine me as a teacher, I come and put my head. How will it be? Do you, do, would you like to see your teacher to be so lethargic, tired, yawning all the time? You will be yelling, I mean, you will be hurling abuses in your mind in very soundlessly. <laughs> you will be telling, what is this? She didn't sleep, I think. He didn't sleep well. And look at him, how he has come. Right? So we don't want our students also to be like this. See, there has to be, how to avoid it is establish a regular schedule for sleep. Avoid sleeping past 7 a.m. We hear of many of them getting up at 9 and 10. Well, we say they are so lucky to sleep till 9 and 10. Okay, that might be occasional. On a Sunday, you can do that. But try and have a regular time. Get up at the same time each morning. Even if you have slept late, no? Try to get up. That is how you can tune your body to a particular regularity. Right? Avoid taking naps during the day. But post lunch, a small nap is recommended. But during college times, we cannot afford that luxury. But we have one hour uh, lunch break. Have your meal. Relax for ten, uh, 10 minutes. And then come back. The, uh, resume your classes. The reason why we sleep, we have a tendency to feel little lethargic is after a main meal, like lunch, is because blood gushes to our gastrointestinal tract and the brain doesn't get much supply of blood. This is to help in digestion. So that is why 10 minutes you feel like you, have, you are sinking somewhere. 
soon after you have your meal and then 10 minutes you relax relax in the sense sit wherever you are and then you 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 feel you overcome that feeling right so uh, avoid uh, taking naps avoid caffeine and other stimulants especially in the later part of the day after 7 and 8 the more we have coffee and tea it uh, interferes with our sleep and make time for regular exercise so for academic performance what all we need physical activity physical fitness so that it contributes to better health and ultimately to perform better another thing how many of us do this how many of you do this under the blanket your papa will see your mama will see so please avoid this why because do you know that there is a radiation isn't it there is a emission right and smaller the screen the more it is wider the screen lesser when you watch tv you are at a distance and it is wide screen so those rays are not uh, so much harmful compared to this because we hold it so close so night screen time can destroy your sleep well, you know we are sending signals to our brain be active so if brain gets activated to put that brain back to sleep it takes a long time that is why we need to avoid the uh, screen time before you go to bed okay so it will take you longer to fall asleep it will mess with and delay your circadian clock rhythm why we sleep in the night because god has made the system like that we are awake in the when there is sunlight and when there is it is night so that night is where we are giving time for all our body to rest to repair for wear and tear and relax and also our organs to work at a little slower pace they cannot be working at the same speed all the time then it will decrease your rem what is this rapid eye movement we may be sleeping you no know, sleep can be of different type even if we are sleeping our eyeball keeps rotating so that means your brain is still not come to uh, a, a resting position so there will be rapid eye movement and that kind of sleep will not make you to get up fresh you might have slept for seven hours but you still feel tired when you get up and that's because you may have not enjoyed uh, pro proper sleep that's because in your sleep uh, the duration of rapid eye movement has been more and that is why you have not got up as a fresh and active person okay it will make you more alert when you want to wind up and uh, the blue light emitted by your cell phone restrains the productivity of a hormone called melatonin this is the hormone which controls our sleep and wake cycle so that it interferes with that that is why and it keeps our mind psychologically engaged so please cut screen time to one hour before bed or discontinue at least 30 minutes before bed that should not be the last thing we see before we hit the pillow right uh, even tablets and TVs can emit blue light that can contribute to poor, s poor sleep. So that is why this and then the screen, your uh, phone screen. And another thing, avoid eating very late at night. Definitely a big no for this choice in the night. Eating late can lead to several health hazards. And uh, having an early dinner, a gap of one hour before you sleep. Give rest to the gastrointestinal tract. Our poor stomach also has to rest, you know. It cannot be working. It cannot you cannot force it to digest the food uh, when it wants to relax. Eating late at night is harmful for your brain health also. So there are a lot of disadvantages of eating very late. It, you should not eat and go to sleep. There must be at least one hour of difference. So then I need not tell you, these are all the other things which can uh, cause lot of harm to our health like tobacco and uh, cigarettes and uh, various other uh, products you know these and even alcohol in any form so how do we change so here we come to the last part it let our diet be more colorful it doesn't mean that you have to add color you have it should be choose foods which have different colors because each color denotes and gives us different nutrients so it's called the eat the rainbow the whites the yellows the reds the purple and the green here i have strawberry cherries apple raspberries all belong to one color the yellow or orange pineapple carrots peaches mango orange etc peas and kiwi and avocado green grapes cucumber broccoli spinach and all the greens the green leafy vegetables give us all the green color 
blueberries, blackberries, plums and grapes. Eggplant is nothing, our brinjal, badane kai. Okay, resins, all are purple in color. And banana, cauliflower, pears, white peaches, mushrooms and eggs are white in color. So when we have variety in our diet, they will give us lot of nutrients also. So good foods in, bad foods out, minimize snacking, make the TV, uh, make the TV room and no eating zone. It is like put on the TV and keep watching it and we will never know how much you have eaten or have you eaten adequately or not. So some physical activity is needed because when you indulge in physical activity our body releases some chemical substances which we call them as endorphins which are feel good hormones. They make us feel happy and uh, joyful. So uh, I just wanted to share one st two studies which have been done. Uh, this is one study called National Youth Risk Behavior Survey. Uh, just to make you understand that you know like they try to uh, relate the dietary behavior with the uh, students grades. So they found that children, the students in that campus who in indulged in more unhealthy uh, eating uh, had lower grades compared to those who were in, uh, eating healthy uh, food. So uh, what was the advice outcome of this is that they, the edu educational institutions, health personnel and other decision makers could use this to understand the relation between dietary behavior and grades and then to uh, reinforce the policies. I think in that regard inviting a nutritionist to address the student is one step which you have taken uh, to say that to make your students perform better to be to be geared oriented towards what are the benefits of eating healthy and leading a healthy life. So th what they found was uh, compared to students with lower grades, students with higher grades were eating breakfast all days they ate, uh, they had fruit or 100% uh, fruit juice one or more times per day. They ate vegetables one or more times per day. They did not drink the canned or the bottled or the glass of soda or the pop-up uh, drinks. The findings do not show that ad academic grades are associated with drinking one or more glasses per day of milk. Milk was not included in that. Now, if I tell you to drink milk, you think I am not a small child to drink milk, but you need to drink some milk. Okay? or at least eat curd because we get calcium from that. You do not get that much calcium and uh, milk is a good source of calcium that is the reason. And one more study in university students what they did they tried to explore the correlation between eating habits and academic achievement. Again let us come to the conclusion what they observed was that healthy eating habits have a positive effect on students academic performance and other habits like you know sleep habits also were found to be more important. So uh, to end up I would like to say research has shown that students are able to learn better when they are well nourished. You can have better memory, you can be more alert and you, your brain can process the information faster. If you have chosen information science, if you have chosen computer science, please do not undermine your brain is the best computer. If this computer works then you can develop the software or the hardware or whatever. right? So. Eat foods which are rich in protein, fiber, healthy fats like eggs and yogurt. Yogurt is curd, apples and oatmeal, all of them. Pick foods from every color of the rainbow and promote some diet quality for positive school outcomes. I think I am running short of time. I will skip this. Now, there are some efforts. You have heard of UGC, University Grants Commission also has brought out some kind of a statement saying that it asks universities and educational institutes to ban junk food being sold in their premises. So they have issued a circular to all of them asking them, them to see that there is no junk food being sold in institutions. All vice chancellors have been asked to take measures to sensitize students. So this is one sensitization you have received uh, what, uh, what choices you should make where food is concerned. And even the Ministry of Human Resource Development has asked to ban junk food in colleges because we are finding there is a rise in overweight and obesity in the younger population. Okay? So the take home message, be responsible for your act. Okay? Avoid getting distracted because there is lot of uh, scope for getting distracted. Focus on your goals, enjoy your college days because these days will not come back. Right? So enjoy them to the best. And you can retain the pleasant memories and uh, establish good relations with your teachers, with your friends, with everyone. Do everything in moderation. 
make your parents proud this is very important they have placed so much trust they have sacrificed so much and they want to see you do well in your life come out in flying colors flourish so let us make our parents proud and above all be responsible citizens of our country okay so eat healthy to stay healthy and i would like to quote this by audrey hepburn have you heard of she is one very old actress from hollywood what she had told nothing is impossible the word itself says if you split and read i am possible so nothing is impossible because everything is possible if you make up your mind so have a plan proper schedule your day write and communicate develop an expertise skill and be creative so this is the best advice i can give to students and you are welcome to my department it's very close from this gate you can visit us any time you you want to and i would like to end it by uh, sharing a quote by bb king uh, the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you no one can steal your knowledge the information which you have got so treasure that try and acquire it the time you spend in the campus make it most productive for yourself for your family and for the entire nation okay thank you so much any questions as a teacher i am hungry for questions yeah that's a good question see many of us uh, would want to have water before or during meal drinking 15 to 20 minutes before is better but avoid drinking in between unless somebody has any swallowing problem maybe the elderly or someone may have the reason why we don't advise you to drink water along with your meal is because you know as soon as the food enters into our gastrointestinal tract our uh, uh, the gut what we call no the gut or uh, the gastrointestinal tract and the pancreas will start releasing the enzymes for digestion so when food comes in contact with the enzymes the food gets digested proteins are broken down to amino acids carbohydrates to uh, sugars and all so when you add water it's like you just imagine you have a beaker you have food you have added enzyme then i'm adding water what what happens it gets diluted so the interaction between the enzymes and the food substrate will be minimized that is the reason we don't advise you know doctors and uh, health professionals we don't advise unless there is any health issue like you know some people choke up very soon they they have to uh, have little bit of water or you're eating very dry food that could be the reason so after 10 15 minutes you have water make this a habit you will adjust yourself uh, to that okay hope i have answered your question instead you can keep sipping later no teacher will prevent you from drinking water in the class but not eating <laughs> is there any other question no i hope i have been able to impart some information which could be of use to you all especially at this the very crucial stage of your life enjoy your uh, college days but enjoyment is not the only thing what i mean enjoyment is enjoy your studies to enjoy that you must have a healthy mind in a healthy body okay thank you it was a very informative session ma'am I sincerely thank you uh, our speaker Dr Asna Urja for her wonderful talk on the behalf of the organizing committee of the student induction program SJC JSS STU so I thank madam for her valuable time and enlightening us if not uh, let's thank uh, madam once again with a round uh, big round of applause the session concludes here thank you one and all so there is an announcement for the students so today afternoon we have an activities so for the group one students so you have a cultural activity 
So after the lunch break from 1.30 to 2.30, so, so you need to come here uh, to the same auditorium, CSIS seminar hall and the batch 2 students you will be having a campus walk. So you people assemble near the auditorium and the batch 3 students will be having games today. You need to assemble near the sports complex. So I hope all of you have seen the sports complex. Once you enter the uh, university, towards the left we have a, a basketball stadium. Next to that we have a, a sports complex. So bash three students, you assemble there by 2.15. So today the various games will be played for you. So the group two or the batch two students will be having a campus work according to the campus. Uh, we have fixed the route map. So according to that, you have to follow that. So. Okay, thank you one and all.